Hey guys, welcome back to Twitchy's Kerbal Space Program where we, last time I promised you a working space plane. And so here we have a space plane with the cargo of one of the orphan satellites making its way up to the upper atmosphere to see if this is indeed the way forward here. This is the Sparrow's Hope. Uh, it has two jet engines on the back. You'll see also on the back it has two clusters of five um, of those little Rock Rockamax inline engines. I can't remember exactly their designation off the top of my head. And it turns out that only when the aerodynamics model is about to change and everything that I'm learning is just going to be useless in less than a week's time, can I actually nail the technique for getting this thing up into orbit? Now, I want to show you why this thing can make it up into orbit. That is, of course, by the power of this, like, super mega cluster of air intakes underneath here. Uh, this is the number I've used. This is not their final uh, positions on my space plane. I end up hiding a lot underneath the wing at the back there uh, and all sorts of things like that. But let's return back up to the Sparrow's Hope. We are cruising here at 24 kilometers, just clicking over to 25. We left the runway with a three kilometer Delta V, which is my lowest space plane here. Uh, you'll notice that we are now up at 30 kilometers and my ship is starting to list ever so slightly to the right. Now this is my signal to start pulling back on the throttle there. This is to make the air intake input equal what the engines are using on the back just so we can keep pushing up and if you watch my apple app the uh increase here is actually something quite to behold we're already up at 40 kilometers and we're quite a way up we've just made a switch to rocket engines here and just pushing our way up, up. already at 40 kilometers this is just the the gains are immense um, as you can see we have over this short brief burn already pushed our apple apps up above the 70 kilometer orbit line. Um, the One of the problems I had was uh, lack of fuel lines. I, I'd completely forgotten to put any fuel lines on here. So the, the fuel mixture was like emptying in different places depending on which, which uh, engines were burning. But no, this is all good. Uh, another problem that I had was the number of wings I had to try and fit on there. It, it turns out just the ones on the side were not good enough. I had to put this sort of a round design uh, around the, the main fuselage here just to try and give myself an extra extra bit of lift I, I'm not sure what the formula is for the amount of wings you need per per like ton of mass or something like that and at the same same token I don't know how many air intakes you need per unit of engine or whatever yeah I, I'm just totally not sure about that okay so we've done ourselves a complete orbit we're coming over the top of the uh, the desert right now, so it's time to start deorbiting. We just want to deorbit enough to bring ourselves down over the top of the, the, the space center here. Uh, we, we managed to make it up with like well over half our oxidizer left, so I have a feeling this vessel could go a lot further, like a lot, lot further. Uh, and even when we slowed down, we still got well, if we just left ourselves here, we've still got over a quarter of our oxidizer left, which is more than enough to, to do what we want to do. Uh, I'm trying to like pinpoint a landing here. So we, we could have just let the atmosphere slow ourselves down quite a lot uh, and not wasted all that oxidizer and liquid fuel. But as I said, I wanted to come down and, and try and put in a landing on the, on the, uh, the runway over there uh coming down with actually what turns out to be my favorite deorbiting technique i come down upside down and then just kind of pull up uh or pull down i suppose is the is the actual thing and, and do this sort of inverted horseshoe which which lines me up beautifully here um it's particularly good as i always seem to overshoot my target so this kind of puts me down looking in the right direction now one of the main problems here is the back landing gear are not actually attached to the main body of the fuselage here they're actually attached to the wings so everything goes a little bit squiffy but working space plane of course a space plane cannot truly be said to be a space plane until we test it into actual real mission circumstances so we're going to come across to the mission control hey gene and grab up this uh launcher satellite mission uh this one has a five million meter orbit and a three degree inclination so basically just an equatorial orbit to work with uh this time Matford and Frank are taking the uh, Sparrow's Hope up to high altitude. Uh, they reach all the way up to 40 kilometers this time before they have to hit the, uh, hit the rockets. Uh, quite a small burn to push us up above the atmosphere here. And then when we get up there, we only have to do the smallest maneuvers to circularize ourselves at 80 kilometers. 
When that's all done, we then pro drop out the uh, little orphan. This one we are calling Annie, little orphan Annie. Uh, and due to the size of the orbit that we have to uh, perform here, this one's going to take a little bit of time setting up some maneuvers, getting those burns in place. So let's bring the Sparrow's Hope back. Uh, we're dropping down into the atmosphere here. And again, using this uh, horseshoe technique, uh, what I'm going to call it, I suppose, uh, we overshoot a little bit, but we fly back over the ocean before touching down gently and actually doing all right yeah no i like that brilliant the end of every space plane mission requires a few tweaks in the uh, space plane hangar just to like deal with some of the things that i've noticed like the wobbly landing gear maybe moving some of the the, the fuel lines around stuff like that and when we've done that we're going to move our way out to little annie make her make her orbit out to the right size now the only thing we have to do is deal with inclination this will happen a little bit further on in time Time to kill means we're off to the Mission Control Center, and if there is one thing that I've not been doing an awful lot of during this particular playthrough, it's building space stations. And Gene just happens to have two contracts for us here. One of them is for the Minmus Station. Uh, it needs five Kerbals, the standard docking port, antenna and stuff. And we can get 200,000 routes for that. Uh, the other one I want to take on is this uh, solar station. Uh, six Kerbal station for 450k routes in a solar orbit. I think that one's quite interesting to go for, so we're going to go for all of these. We're going to start with Cassiopeia, my station that was meant for Minmus. Uh, the reason I called it Cassiopeia was when I was trying to think of like a name to put in, all I could think of was Orion. And I don't know about you, but I am sick of spacecraft being called the name Orion. Uh, and I was out and about, I was staring at stars. I was like, well, that one's Orion. Well, what's over here? Cassiopeia. Boom. Cassiopeia will do. Now you'll notice uh, that it's a bit of a strange shape. We will get into that a little bit. All that you really need to know during these lifting phases is this was actually going to be a multi-lift station. It's just that when I'd actually put it on top of this, uh, what I'm going to call the beast lifting stage underneath that I keep as a sub-assembly, I had so much extra Delta V that it was quite humorous. Uh, so I decided to bolt the things that I was going to have as the extra lift on the side and we'll see how we deploy those in a second. The transfer was relatively boring. Uh, I'm going to be honest here. We just like flew up, pointed at Minmus, did our burn, got into the sphere of influence. Everything was fine there. If you can remember the many, many minutes ago when I said that little orphan Annie needed to make an inclination burn to make sure she was in place, this is the inclination burn we needed to do. And within a few seconds, we have got it. So the contract is all completed. So there's the end of that particular mission. We're just going to leave her here. We don't have any vessels to bring her back with. Back over at Minmus, we have technically already completed the contract for this space station, but this is not its final form and I wish to put it into its final form. And I'd like to take a minute to explain exactly what I'm doing here. So the things that I'd bolted on the side are literally just a command pod, a structural support with then a docking port on the end and I managed to like glitch out a probe core into the middle there to make sure that it could fly all on its own. I then surrounded it with RCS because obviously the command pod has a little bit of RCS in it and all it had to do was fly from the outside of this bottom uh, unit here. I don't, I don't know what you want to call this. It is the science lab obviously but it's also got little bits attached to it including things like winches and um, the, the fuel lines, radial connector ports. Uh, but yeah we fly it from there then we literally just do a little bit of a backwards roll push ourselves back towards the docking port let the, the wonderful magnetization do its job and then end up with this quite bizarre looking space station here i quite like what i did i used um structural fuel tanks the, they're the ones without any fuel obviously to make this sort of weird four-way maybe six-way uh junction at the top there obviously i don't have access to the station core the station core the uh the yellow multi-directional bit that you would put normally in the middle of all that i had to use the um, structural supports and as i say the structural fuel tanks but Look at that, isn't that a beautiful thing now? The only thing really that we have to do now is get rid of the fuel tank underneath. Uh, obviously this was just a lifting stage, we didn't really want it to be there. And we also need to put it into like some sort of more useful orbit. Uh, I'm reckoning somewhere within the, uh, within the orbit of the Majestic Eye there. Uh, and if we go around a little bit, 
uh, we should perform a, a few small maneuvers, but I'm actually going to jump forward two maneuvers, which places us really low down to Minma's, uh, Minman's surface here. So what I'm trying to do is put my periaps below the surface so that when I spin up the vessel here, well, the space station, it's not a vessel, this is the thing I have to remember, um, we can throw off that fuel tank. Now I'm going to look towards my prograde and use all my RCS that is remaining to try and put this back into a stable orbit. We've already pushed it up above the, the height of any mountains that might be around and we're just going to carry on trying to make it as close to circular as we're going to get now i know that we're not going to get there uh, my apple apps is at 80 my periaps is now at 30 and that is the best we're going to be able to do so we're going to follow this around and after a little bit of time of mucking around with the camera i was trying to find something decent uh, a decent camera angle to watch it from but it turns out that just watching from the normal orbital view is the way forward here and we're going to watch this crash because hey why wouldn't we uh, i i really do enjoy this i say this every time that we crash these bits it's quite nice uh we're coming in and i kind of wish i'd watched out for the uh the shadow because that little bit of shadow racing in there was great. Another thing that's quite great is my solar space station here and its first takeoff. Uh, it was one of the more spectacular launches that I actually had for a long time, so I thought we'd uh, watch it here. Absolute death and destruction. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to all the side boosters, but here is one of them all the way over there. With a little bit of jumping around of the camera, we can eventually zoom in here. And this just, well, we just had to wait for it to burn out. Um, it started doing a little bit of a backflip because obviously the uh, fuel was draining from the front edge and you can see it there starting to go backwards before it well completely misses the space center i was kind of hoping that it would hit the space center and comes down for uh, an amazing crash in the ocean uh one thing i do notice we all know noticed that ridge line underwater there has anyone actually touched it even with the like submarine challenges that were going on recently anyone i if not i might have to uh, give it a pop at some point Additional struts are definitely the saving grace of this design. Um, so let's talk about the actual design itself, shall we? Uh, you'll notice that I've put something approaching a ring in the middle of this station here. That's because I want. I was watching on the, the, the Kerbal group uh, that everyone had started making ring stations and I wanted to build something along those lines, but I didn't want to just come out and build a straight ring station uh, like everyone's done one before. So I, I made this thing that's kind of like a ball with like living quarters inside when we get up to higher altitudes like 80 kilometers or something you can see on the inside there i have what i call the pig faces i can't remember what the uh, actual designation again is but they're the ones with the the three uh, three crew capsule uh, with the pointy face uh, i put two of those facing each other around a structural support then run fuel lines up and down that middle bit so that everything could be shared out amongst it uh, you also notice that we have uh, nuclear engines on the bottom we also have ion engines on the other side because as this is going out to the sun uh, i thought it might as well have like maximum maneuverability and be able to do whatever it wants to do so you'll notice that i dumped a whole load of fuel there mainly because this thing was getting a little bit unstable obviously the uh, the middle joint there isn't the strongest thing in the world and when you're controlling from the top it, it all gets a little bit uh, hectic when it was all wobbling around so i used this slightly shorter engine and fuel stack here to give me more more control uh, it is all about control at this point uh, and I also like to talk to you guys about next season uh, obviously with 1.0 coming out uh, I'm going to be wrapping, wrapping this season up don't worry we're going to be bringing Jeb and the boys home we're also going to send out a probe to Jewel I think in the intervening time um, given the Kerbal countdown I think we're going to have next Monday's episode being of this season and then at some point we'll do like some super ultra um, release every day for a little while Kerbal system I'm not sure about every day maybe every other day because uh, obviously it takes time to play and then to commentate on top as well okay so we're beginning the long arduous push up to um solar altitudes just trying to get outside the curb and sphere of influence is actually quite tough and this took a very long time I've, I've only got a poodle on the bottom here so what i think i'm going to do is make a small jump forwards though i like the lighting arrangements i've done on this what do you guys think nice not no. Okay, and the final bit of footage I have for you today is us racing away from the Kerbin system out towards, well, contract completion and solar orbit. Um, if you guys have any sort of ideas on what I should be doing next season, please do let me know. I'm definitely going to be exploring all the different new features. I'd also like to do a vessel something along the lines of this. You'll see that I've got, um, what are these called? The, the Kerbal Attachment System boxes all the way around the outside. And inside there, I've got things like octagonal str struts, the uh, external seats, monopropellant and thrusters, as well as... Um, 
solar panels and wheels. So I basically have the do anything systems in these box. I can make rovers, I can make monoprop bikes. I'm not sure whether I can fit any wings in there or not. But yeah, I would like to make some sort of go anywhere, do anything um, vessel that is kind of like the PR, uh, PR boys of the Kerbin system so that these guys are out getting more and more fuel whilst the boys back at the space center are providing the money to keep this vessel up and running. Yeah, so that, that's my idea. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think of that. And until next time, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this series of adventures with the space planes and the double sp space stations. Uh, I will see you next time where we're going to get Jeb, Jeb and that lot home, get this dual mission at least partially underway. Pro hopefully we will finish it all on Monday, get these dual contracts done, get the boys from um, Juno back home. It, it should be interesting. Anyway, I will see you then. When we're going to do that. Bye.